Hi, welcome back. Um, this is our third presentation in the sequence about uh, evolution and natural selection, this time focusing on adaptation. Uh, so different types of adaptations of organisms to their environment. Uh, I left you with an exam question last time. Um, let's think about that. So why does celery only produce insecticides when attacked by insects? Uh, so uh, it's about saving energy and saving resources. It's not necessary for it to have it there all the time. It only needs to produce the resources. Uh, it only needs to produce that particular insecticide, which is probably a protein, when it needs to. So therefore, it doesn't carry out the transcription and the translation unless it's required to do so. So it's a process that can be switched on and off. Uh, and you'll find out more about that, I believe, in the, a, the second year of AE level. Um, as to the steps of which resistance may arise, this is the steps for natural selection. So there's a different particular allele for resistance. Um, it might have been mutation that should caused it, but it's a random chance as to whether it res is resistant or not. Those which are resistant will survive, or those which are more susceptible or less resistant will die. This is natural selection. The insecticide is the selective agent or the selective pressure. So it is providing the selection. Those which are resistant will pass that mutation or allele for resistance onto their offspring. And remember, if we're talking about alleles, we are not talking about genes because this is an alternative form of a gene, therefore it's an allele. And, and as that frequency of that particular allele for resistance will increase in the population as these ones survive to breed and pass on that to the next generation. So uh, just want to pause this for a moment. Can you think about summarising natural selection in keywords or phrases, in six keywords or phrases? So pause and have a go and see if you can think about the six keywords that might summarise this process. And what did I go with? Well, let's have a look. I went with, oops, wrong way. Mutation. Could have thought about different alleles, but mutation or alleles or alternative alleles at the start. You get intraspecific variation, a variation between members of the same species. Uh, you get selection pressure, choosing a particular version of a, a, an allele. Survival, i.e. only those best able to survive will survive. The next generation inherits that particular characteristic. And over a period of time, this leads to adaptation, i.e. A population as a whole adapts to become better suited to their environment as that characteristic builds up across the population. So adaptation is features that help an organism to survive as an environment and populations which are well adapted will mostly have that feature or will have that feature. Uh, for example, the camel and its hump, which as we all know obviously is fat store uh, to help it to survive in areas where it is less able to uh, get water. The fat can be respired for water and also helps it to uh, provide it with food stores for long periods of time in areas where they may not be much food as well as much water. So types of adaptation, um, you can think about anatomical, sometimes you talk about morphological external features as well. Uh, the There could be anatomical adaptations. Classic example is tooth type. We're talking about herbivores versus carnivores here. Uh, so here is, uh, I think this is a deer versus a fox. Um, you've got gr flat grinding ridged teeth for chewing up and breaking up the cellulose to get the nutrients out of it. Carnivores, sharp canines to paralyse prey, sharp uh, what we call carnasal teeth at the back of the mouth to scissor up and tear off the flesh. Uh, physiological, how the thing, something functions even down to the cellular level and again you might think about biochemical uh, adaptations coming along with the physiological adaptations. Um, poisons or venoms produced by reptiles to kill prey is a physiological adaptation. Uh, the fennec fox has particular characteristics which help it to survive in the desert. For example, its kidneys can reabsorb as much of the water or nearly all of the water as it takes in. So it doesn't produce an awful lot of urine uh, when it's in hot, arid, dry conditions. And the classic example of the penicillin mould, uh, as popularised by Alexander Fleming, and his, produ uh, his um, production of penicillin, you then uh, found that certain yeast and other bacteria 
produce antibiotics which inhibit the growth of other organisms around them so these can take up the nutrients. Behavioural adaptations, how an organism lives its life, could be um, reproductive courtship, um, scorpions we've shown you here but it could be birds for example, things which display, have a particular um, coat colour, those which have a particular exaggerated characteristic may survive to breed or uh, it may be uh, organisms which fight but they're just fighting for the right to mate rather than it being fighting to often to the death. Um, survival, the yeah, opossum or possum, I've classically described as plain possum, yeah, they pretend to be dead, it's a muscle, uh, muscles go tightly into contraction and it looks like it's a dead, it's not, it's just its muscles are gone to spasm and it's pretending to be dead so that hopefully organisms will uh, ignore it and go away from it. Works fine if it's maybe a predator, less fine if it's a car, yeah, so it's still roadkill. Uh, and finally you get the seasonal uh, migration to better climates, looking for food, etc, etc. If they're going to fly away somewhere warmer, uh, then it is a behavioural adaptation. Uh, don't forget we can all consider, consider plants, yeah, it's not just about um, animal organisms. Uh, one of the ones that uh, you could be expected to know about is the marum grass. It's a common example of a UK uh, plant organism. It's found on the sand dunes uh, around the coast. It's a xerophyte. It's adapted to live in dry conditions with little fresh water. Remember, it might be exposed to salt water, but it's not necessarily getting lots of fresh uh, water, so therefore it needs to have adaptations to help it survive in those desert conditions. Desert conditions, dry and desiccated conditions. It's often windy as well, um, and there's no real, the, the sand is very free draining, so water drains through it really quickly, so it struggles to suck up the water. Um, so what adaptations does it have? It has rolled up or curled up leaves. Leaves are curled up into a tube shape. Um, and then it's got little hairs on the inside here. So here are some of the hairs there, um, which will trap moist air, and that reduces the amount of water diffusing out, changing the uh, sort of in effect the water potential of the air around there, so that less water evaporates and it stays in there. You've also got a thick waxy cuticle around the outside to help to reduce air evaporation. There are behavioural things it can do. Um, when it's short of water, the leaf rolls even more tightly. There are particular cells called hinge cells which change shape to actually close the stomata and reduce the uh, transpiration. Uh, uh, that's a physiological one, the hinge cells. It, it, they change the shape, but um, the turgidity of the stomata, opening and closing, combination of physiology and uh, behaviour. Um, and then the leaves are lignified. They um, are sort of given strength or support with the woody material which helps to prevent it from wilting and dro drooping when it's not turgid. Another specifically mentioned in your example of specification, the difference between these two organisms, the marsupial mole and the placental mole. Here's our marsupial mole, uh, it's eating a lizard, so uh, nice for if you can get it, and the European or common placental mole. Remember marsupials are pl uh, organisms that develop in a pouch found in Australia. Placental organisms, they come from a placenta, they develop inside the womb of the mother. Um, but these are a classic example of something called convergent evolution. They have similar characteristics even though they have evolved separately over mil millions of years. Uh, they both have small to no eyes, strong front uh, legs and digging claws, a streamlined body shape which is about the same sort of size, smooth fur to allow them to quickly pass through the soil, no ears on the outside of their head. Um, but their nearest common ancestor was probably not mole-like. They have developed these characteristics to suit their environment um, and it has just uh, so happens that they have both adapted to that particular, taken those particular adaptations on over a long period of time. But their common ancestor was not more like they have de both developed to be similar despite living in different environments in different places around the earth. Uh, that's it for today. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye.